Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again after months of spouting gibberish. The spaceship left the solar system in 2012. NASA never expected this. Voyager 1, the tiny probe launched nearly 50 years ago, has just sent back something impossible. A discovery so shocking, so beyond what scientists thought possible, that it has left NASA scrambling for answers dot decades ago. Voyager 1 was only supposed to study Jupiter and Saturn. Tune in, because Voyager's latest message isn't just another routine signal. Voyager's endless journey. Way back in the old days, on a September morning in 1977, NASA launched a little space traveler called Voyager 1. The plan, a quick five-year tour of Jupiter and Saturn. But guess what? This little probe wasn't ready to quit so soon. But now, decades later, Voyager 1 is sending back something. Something we never saw coming. Voyager 1 completely smashed all expectations. Not only did it ace its original mission, but it's still going strong almost 50 years later. Imagine this, a machine from the disco era, way less advanced than today's smartphones, is still out there, flying through the dark and sending back mind-blowing data. First, it sent back stunning pictures of Jupiter and Saturn, snapshots so jaw-dropping, you can still find them on NASA's website. Thanks to Voyager, we discovered brand new moons around Jupiter, found out that Saturn has a whole system of rings we never knew about, and learned that Jupiter's famous Great Red Spot is actually a massive, swirling, never-ending storm. But Voyager wasn't done yet. After waving goodbye to Saturn, it kept going, cruising past Neptune's orbit into deep space. Its next big job? Studying plasma in the mysterious Kuiper Belt. Never heard of it? Picture a giant ring of icy space rocks stretching way past Neptune. It's like the asteroid belt, but 20 times wider and 100 times heavier. And then there's the heliosphere, a massive bubble around our sun where solar wind meets space gas. Sounds complicated, but the big deal here is that Voyager's data is helping scientists figure out how our solar system interacts with the galaxy beyond. One of Voyager 1's most famous moments came when it turned around and snapped a picture of Earth from 4 billion miles away. The result? A tiny pale blue dot floating in endless blackness. That image became legendary, reminding us just how small and fragile our home really is. But Voyager 1 isn't just a space explorer, it's a messenger too. Tucked inside is the famous Golden Record, a message in a bottle for any aliens that might stumble across it. This isn't just some mixtape, it's a carefully curated collection of Earth's greatest hits. What's on it? A greeting in 55 different languages, music from all around the world, and a whole lot more. Classical pieces by Beethoven and Bach, rock and roll from Chuck Berry, and folk songs from across the globe. There are also nature sounds, birds singing, ocean waves, a baby's cry, and even a heartbeat. Along with the audio, Voyager carries 116 pictures showing everything from human life to math and science. Oh, and let's not forget the instructions on how to play it because aliens probably don't have record players. To top it off, scientists included a map showing Earth's location in the Milky Way. Some people think that's risky. Do we really want to be found? But NASA took the chance, hoping that if intelligent life ever finds Voyager, they'll know where it came from. And so, with its golden message in tow, Voyager 1 took off on its incredible journey. Fast forward to today, and this tiny probe has traveled a mind-blowing distance over 14 billion miles from Earth. That makes it the farthest human-made object ever. It even left its twin, Voyager 2, in the dust, despite launching two weeks later. And get this, it's flying at a ridiculous speed of 35,000 miles per hour. To put that in perspective, the fastest sports car in the world barely hits 305 miles per hour. Voyager is on a whole other level. Right now, it's heading toward the Oort Cloud, a mysterious, icy shell at the very edge of our solar system. Scientists think it's out there, but no one's actually seen it yet. If the Oort Cloud is real, it could be packed with comets and frozen relics from the birth of the solar system. And Voyager 1 might just get close enough to confirm it if it stays intact for a few more hundred years. But here's the thing. Voyager 1 won't last forever. By 2025, its power supply will run low and eventually we'll lose contact. Imagine that, after all these decades, our link to one of humanity's most incredible creations 
will just fade away. But even after it stops talking to us, Voyager 1 won't stop moving. In about 300 years, it'll drift into the Oort cloud. In 30,000 years, it'll officially leave the solar system for good. Voyager 1's Mysterious Signals In May 2022, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which oversees the spacecraft, reported something unusual. Voyager 1 began sending bizarre data back to Earth, something no one expected. Now you might think, it's an old machine, it's probably just breaking down. It seems to be a hardware problem, flight data subsystem, so one of the computers on board has broken. But here's the thing, Voyager 1 is fine. It's still following commands, collecting data, and transmitting back to Earth like clockwork. Yet there's one major hiccup. Its Attitude and Articulation Control Subsystem, or AACS, started sending gibberish. It's not surprising for something that's four and a half decades old and has been operating for nearly three and a half decades longer than it should have. This system is critical. It keeps Voyager oriented in space, ensuring its antenna points toward Earth. Without it, communication would be impossible. Despite its age, Voyager's antenna remains perfectly aligned with Earth, transmitting clear and steady signals. Everything appears normal, yet the data tells a different story. A puzzling anomaly that has left scientists searching for answers. Suzanne Dodd, the project manager, says this isn't entirely shocking. It's the only spacecraft that's gone by Uranus, only spacecraft that's gone by Neptune. Everything we know about those planets, we know from Voyager. Voyager is 45 years old, after all. But even she admits the root cause of the issue is a mystery. They don't know where the corrupted data is coming from or how it will affect Voyager's future operations. One possible culprit? Infinite space. Out there, radiation levels are extraordinarily high and no spacecraft has ever ventured this far before. For now, NASA is monitoring the signals closely, trying to unravel the mystery. Will they solve it? Or will Voyager 1, ever the enigmatic explorer, take this secret with it as it drifts farther into the cosmos? Whatever the outcome, one thing is certain. Voyager's journey is far from ordinary. Still, if NASA can pinpoint the problem with Voyager 1, the team will attempt to fix. If not, they'll have to adapt to the spacecraft's new quirks and hope it doesn't impact its mission. But understanding the issue might not be enough. Here's why. Every signal from Voyager 1 takes a staggering 20 hours and 33 minutes to reach Earth and the same amount of time for a response to get back. Thankfully, Voyager 2, Voyager 1's twin, is holding up just fine. It's also in space, currently about 12 billion miles from Earth. That's still mind-blowing, but for now, it's running smoothly. While we wait for news about Voyager 1's mysterious behavior, the question remains, how much longer can this resilient little probe last? Will it survive long enough to reach the Oort cloud in 300 years? But as we ponder the fate of Voyager's mission, a new chapter of exploration is already unfolding, one that could redefine everything we know about the universe. Revolutionary space technologies ahead. With the James Webb Space Telescope successfully launched, humanity now has its most powerful tool yet to hunt for planets like ours. We are getting a futuristic glimpse into our solar system's past after seven years and more than four billion miles. But it's not working alone. Other cutting edge tools like the Kepler Space Telescope and the TESS satellite are at the forefront of this monumental search. Together, they're reshaping how we see our universe and our place in it. But before diving into the remarkable ways these instruments work, let's pause to ask, why are we searching for Earth-like planets? Simply put, because we can. The incredible advances in telescope technology over the past decades have made it possible. These breakthroughs allow astronomers to detect planets orbiting stars far beyond our solar system, known as exoplanets, by observing subtle changes in starlight. Here's how it works. When a planet orbits a star, the gravitational interaction between the two creates a slight wobble in the star's light. For centuries, this wobble was hidden by the natural twinkling of starlight as it passed through Earth's atmosphere. But then came adaptive optics, an ingenious technology that neutralizes that twinkle. Tiny mechanical springs beneath telescope mirrors adjust their position ever so slightly, removing the distortion and revealing the wobble caused by orbiting planets. This method, called the astrometric method, has led to the discovery of thousands of exoplanets. Whole star systems, once invisible to us, suddenly became observable. It was a revelation. Our solar system was no longer unique. The realization that nearly every star might host planets sent shockwaves through the scientific community. And one question stood out above the rest. 
Are there other Earths out there? Finding another Earth is a big deal. Just look at the resources being poured into the search. The James Webb Telescope alone cost a staggering $10 billion, while the Kepler mission ran at $550 million and TESS added another $200 million. And those are just hardware costs. Add the salaries of data scientists, PhDs, engineers, and researchers worldwide, and the scale of this mission becomes clear. Humanity is investing heavily in finding another Earth, but why? What's driving this relentless search? Imagine if we found one. It would mean Earth isn't alone. It would fundamentally alter how we view ourselves in the universe. Of course, reaching one of these planets is another story. Interstellar travel remains a distant dream, requiring breakthroughs in physics and technology that we can't yet imagine. But the discovery of an Earth-like planet would be enough to transform science and spark hope for future generations. The idea that there could be planets in the Milky Way, just like Earth, worlds with liquid water, breathable oxygen, and conditions that could support life, makes the vastness of space feel a little less intimidating. In fact, it becomes downright thrilling. Knowing such planets exist wouldn't just inspire us to explore more, it might also deepen our appreciation for the one planet we already call home. It could even unite us as better Earthlings. Right now, three extraordinary missions are leading the charge in the search for another Earth. The Kepler Telescope, the TESS Satellite, and the James Webb Space Telescope. Each uses a distinct approach to hunt for exoplanets, and TESS in particular gives us a big clue about its method. Let's break it down. The T in TESS stands for transiting, the foundation of its search. The E, exoplanets, the ultimate target. The first S is for survey, because TESS scans hundreds of thousands of nearby stars. And the final S, satellite, as TESS orbits Earth, while the James Webb Telescope will orbit the Sun. This team is working in tandem to uncover planets far beyond our solar system. So how does the transit method work? When a planet passes in front of its star, a phenomenon known as a transit, it blocks a tiny fraction of the star's light. This dimming can be measured, and from it, scientists can learn a lot about the planet. By analyzing the brightness of the star and the amount of light that's blocked, astronomers can estimate the planet's size and its distance from the star. But to make these observations, TESS must monitor these stars for extended periods, essentially capturing videos of their light. Unlike a traditional telescope, TESS uses four advanced CCD cameras to stream long-duration images of hundreds of thousands of stars. Why so many? Because planetary transits are rare. For a transit to be observed, the planet must align perfectly between its star and TESS's cameras. If it's slightly off angle, the transit won't be visible. That's why TESS monitors so many stars, to maximize the odds of catching these fleeting events. Consider this, Venus crosses between Earth and the Sun only once every couple of hundred years. Yet TESS has already recorded numerous planetary transits across its vast star survey. And the exciting thing is that for every planet detected by the transit method, there could be hundreds, if not thousands more, that go unseen simply because they don't align perfectly with our line of sight. This leads to a staggering conclusion. Every star likely has planets. Planets are everywhere. Then comes the James Webb Space Telescope, a true marvel of modern engineering. With its enormous 21-foot, 4-inch mirror, James Webb is primed to join the search. This technological masterpiece is expected to uncover new planetary systems, analyze their atmospheres, and perhaps even detect the chemical fingerprints of life. But with great anticipation comes a fair share of nerves. History reminds us why. After the Hubble Space Telescope launched in 1990, it faced significant issues. It wasn't until a repair mission in 1993 that Hubble reached its full potential. Could James Webb face similar challenges? For now, everything seems ready, but the world holds its breath as the telescope embarks on its missions. Speaking of the, the Hubble Space Telescope, a flaw in its mirror left its images disappointingly blurry. Astronauts had to execute a daring spacewalk to fix it, a feat that transformed Hubble into an even better instrument than originally designed. The repaired telescope sent back stunningly precise images, revolutionizing our understanding of the universe. But with the James Webb Space Telescope, such a fix is impossible. Unlike Hubble, which orbits Earth and is accessible to astronauts, James Webb will orbit the Sun, stationed far beyond the Moon, well out of reach. No spacecraft exists that can carry a crew that far. If something goes wrong, there's no chance of a manual repair. To make matters even trickier, James Webb has just one onboard camera to inspect potential damage or malfunctions. 
Any fixes will have to be done remotely from Earth and essentially blind. Now fully deployed, the telescope's 18 mirror segments must be aligned perfectly to function as a single unit. This painstaking process will take several months, but is critical to its mission success. Once aligned, James Webb will immediately begin its work with 70 of its first two 86 observation assignments focused on exoplanets. Thanks to data from previous searches, the telescope already knows where to look, targeting planets whose locations and orbits have been charted by missions like Kepler and TESS. Unlike Hubble, James Webb is not an optical telescope that captures visible light. Instead, it sees the universe in infrared light. This capability is key to its exoplanet missions. Images of planets will appear as bright, fuzzy dots, but the real treasure lies in their spectra. By analyzing the light passing through a planet's atmosphere, the telescope can identify gases like methane, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, potential indicators of life. The data James Webb collects will paint a detailed portrait of these distant worlds. From temperature ranges to atmospheric composition, even the likelihood of liquid water and life, the telescope's infrared capabilities are expected to transform our understanding of exoplanets. This is a game changer in the search for another Earth. But exoplanets are just one part of James Webb's monumental mission. The telescope will also study the formation of stars and planets in nebulae within the Milky Way. By peering into these stellar nurseries, scientists hope to uncover how solar systems, like our own, come into being. James Webb's infrared vision allows it to pierce through cosmic dust and gas, revealing galaxies billions of light years away, galaxies formed just after the Big Bang. These ancient galaxies, whose light has been stretched into the infrared spectrum due to the universe's expansion, have remained invisible until now. The telescope's ability to detect them could unlock new insights into the origins of the cosmos. One of the most exciting aspects of this mission is its potential to shed light on dark energy, the mysterious force causing the universe to expand at an ever-accelerating pace. By observing distant galaxies and their behaviors, James Webb might help solve one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. Hope is high and expectations are immense. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just a marvel of engineering, it's a gateway to answers we've sought for centuries. As it begins its work, we stand on the brink of discoveries that could reshape our understanding of the universe and our place within it. What it reveals will undoubtedly be extraordinary. What other mysteries of the universe are still out there, waiting for us to uncover them? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more.